Book clubbers. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Way! I hope it's your chance to dance your weekly dance break slash book discussion. So glad you're joining us. I'm Jeff Kanata. I'm here with Lana Bashinsky. Hi, Lana. Hello, good morning. And you know, I feel like we got to get going because that favorite quote section is gonna be long today. Let me tell <laughs> you. Well, we got, my goodness, we have so much to get into. We're doing two chapters today, chapters eight and nine of Midnight Tides. And uh, speaking of quotes, uh, we always start the show with a non-spoiler section that isn't about the reading. If you're not caught up, you can still hang out, talk books, enjoy a little uh, little fun times with us after dancing, of course. Uh, and this week is pretty special. We got some some cool topics sent in by you the the viewers listeners yes thank and you. we are so grateful about that we will get to those uh in subsequent weeks please keep them coming you can send them to dlcfeedback at gmail.com you can post them here on the youtube you can uh post them in the discord which is five by five dlc on discord has a book club section there but we got an email this week uh from one checks notes uh mr <laughs> steven erickson who uh passed something our way uh, he noted, as we have uh, talked with him several times and asked him repeatedly about uh, tabletop role-playing games, he noted that we are big fans of <laughs> At tabletop role-playing. At some point, role he, he gleaned that. I'm not exactly sure how. <laughs> yeah. As we pummeled him with uh, questions about playing <laughs> games, he's like, oh, I think these guys like games. Anyway, he sent along an excerpt from uh, one of his non malazan novels. Uh, these are the Willful Child books. By the way, I meant to ask him last time we were we talked to him. I'll have to bring this up next time we talk to him. But last time we talked to him, I meant to bring up the fact that I started uh, reading the first Willful Child. And I it's so delightful, these books. They're so funny. It's just, it's, it's Erickson going full comedic, like just uh, leaning into. He's very funny in the Malazan books, obviously. Yeah. We talk about that a lot. But these are sort of uh, send-ups slash love letters to uh, Star Trek. Uh, Lana and I are both big Star Trek fans as oh, well. Yeah. And Willful Child is his sort of analog to Star Trek, his, his, uh, his version of, 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 of a, a hilarious Star Trek. Um, Erickson is a, a self-confessed fan of Star Trek as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he sent along an excerpt from the third Willful Child novel, uh, which is called The Search for Spark. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a scene uh, where the, uh, the, the crew of the, uh, of the ship are playing D&D. And he thought we would enjoy it. To which I said, not only are we going to enjoy it, but we're going to use the non-spoiler section this week to do a... Staged reading. <laughs> so I, I, I apologies in advance to Mr. Erickson. <laughs> Go ahead, Lana. I haven't done something like this in so many years. I am so delighted that we're going to do this. But yeah, apologies. So the fun <laughs> thing about this. One of us is this. not a professional and it's me. Uh, so whew, no, it's let's be go. A it, 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 hopefully we don't, we don't, uh, we, we do. Uh, service to his prose because mm -hmm. uh, it is phenomenal and very funny. Uh, but the great thing about this, the way the reason it fits so perfectly into a non spoiler topic is it just stands on its own. You don't need to know anything about the novels, uh, these novels, uh, the Wolf of Child novels. You don't need to know anything about the story. All you need to know is some some people are sitting down to play Dungeons and Dragons, and so it, it, it's a very standalone scene. I think people are going to get a kick out of it. And they're We're, they're honestly, they're like people who work on the ship. Yes. Yes. Right, I don't know crew. if that matters. Yeah. But. So I don't even care if people like it or not. We're going to have fun. <laughs> That's the most important part. This is really great. We just happen to be recording it. <laughs> yeah. All right. That was Here. the, I mean, that's literally the thesis of this show. 
in its, in <laughs> it its really entirety. Is. So. It's the thesis, thesis of my entire career, Lana. <laughs> I don't care if other people like it. It's for me. Um, <laughs> all right. So this is from Willful Child Book 3, The Search for Spark. Dungeon Master Sweepy Brogan lit another cigar and leaned back. <sighs> You're now at the foot of Mount Doom, home of the unholy wizard Hadrian of Mount Doom. P.O. Box F.U. for you. Muffy Slap stuffed some taco chips into his mouth, and around all the crunching and gusts of orange powder, he said, We check for traps. What? At the foot of Mount Doom? That's right. But it's a foot. I told you, you're at the foot of Mount Doom. It's a giant foot, right? Chambers sat forward with finger raised. We check the giant toenails. Are any of them hinged? I got a roll for success at finding hinges and traps. What's your percentage, Chambers? Not Chambers, Chambers pointed out. Slick palm the thief. Um, traps. Ha! 79%! Fuck yeah! Roll then, starting with the big toe. Wait, cried Stables. Hold it, slick palm. Is something wrong, O paladin righteous pucker? That depends, thou clever thief of, uh, clever thiefing. Forsooth, which foot are we looking at? The right one or the left? And he stared pointedly at the DM. Uh, right foot. Sweepy replied behind a fresh cloud of acrid smoke. Uh, so where's the left one? Oh, dear, said Sweepy. What's that giant shadow coming from? I look up, shouted Righteous Pucker. I dodge, cried Slick Palm. Emergency dodge. Too late, shouted Sweepy. The giant left foot comes down. I make my save, barked Lefty Limb. Brickhead the dwarf makes his save. Uh, I save too, laughed Skulls, or rather, Ranger, we go this way. Bits of soggy taco chip splattered the table as Muffy said, Go nab the barbarian saves too. Emergency dodge, shrieked Slick Palm. Minus 20 on your roll, Sweepy snapped. I made it, ha! Paladin Righteous Pucker goes for his saving throw. 13% shit. Uh, how much damage? Remember, I'm wearing the armor of the Pucker God, plus... Three against all crushing damage. Right. So uh, subtract three from this. Sweepy rolled die behind her cardboard screen. Ooh, 227 points of damage. How many hit points did you have again? 42, the paladin said (laughs) glumly, and then sat straight. I call upon the pucker god for righteous salvation, plucking me out of danger. Only once a day. Now you're on your own, righteous pucker. Better than dead. So now there's two feet at the base of Mount Doom. and Are they side by side? Slick Palm asked. Well, yeah. Your point? Nothing. Just building my mental picture, right? Two giant feet side by side. We're at the feet of Mount Doom. I check for hinges in the giant toenails. 79% success. 23%. I nail it. <laughs> said Sweepy. Slick Palm frowned. What? What now? Never mind. You find that the left big toe is, in fact, a door with ancient steps leading down. In we go, laughed Slick Palm. Follow me, O famous party of adventurers. How many steps are there? Are you counting? I am. Well, then, you're counting and counting and counting. How many until we get to the bottom? 3,000. 3,000 steps, assuming your thief can count that high. What's his intelligence? 12? But then what's your intelligence, Shapers? My intelligence doesn't count, Sweepy. It's the character's intelligence you have to use. Your intelligence doesn't count? (laughs) Ha, never mind. At the foot of the stairs, there's a door made of wood banded in bronze. I creep up and listen for sounds. You hear a faint moaning sound from the other side. Gonad the Barbarian pulls the seven-foot-long, two-handed sword from the scabbard on his back. Yeah. Drawled Sweepy. How exactly does that work, Gonad? What? It's a seven-foot blade, right? And and a -a seven-and-a-half-foot scabbard strapped to your back. Your character is six-and-a-half feet tall, so um, 
How does he pull that weapon out from its scabbard? What do you mean? He just pulls it out. Yeah, sure. But like how exactly? I know, offered Paladin Righteous Pucker. I let him use my 10-foot ladder. Right, said Gonad. I use Pucker's ladder. Pucker, what kind of ladder is it anyway? Well, it's a ladder of climbing. So like no special ads? What kind of ads? I don't know. A plus one ad or something? Plus one what? Plus one step? Oh, sure. It's got an extra step. A plus one ladder of climbing, Sweepy said. I think he's pulling your leg, Gonad. Why? Hey, Pucker, don't pull my leg while I'm busy trying to unsheath this sword. Yeesh. You want me to fall over and cut myself or something? Uh, Sorry, Gonad. I didn't know that was your leg. A moment of silence. And then (laughs) a chorus of snickering. Then Sweepy said, Gonad gets his sword out. More snickering. Now what? I kick down the door. You can't. You're still on the ladder. I climb down and then I kick open the door. Roll your kick strength and it better be good. Eight percent. That door goes flying. Sweepy nodded. So it does. You all see before you a ledge and beyond that, nothing but open sky. Oh, and there's stone stairs leading up on the left on the outside of the ledge. I sneak out, said Gonad. Look around. You're on a ledge above a huge steep cliff and way down at the bottom are the mangled corpses of three hundred goblins. We're back where we started, screamed Slick Palm. That's right, said Sweepy Brogan. You spent three days fighting your way up the side of the cliff on the outer stone steps, and then you just went down the 3,000 inner steps to end up where you started. And that door you just kicked open was the one you couldn't break into yesterday from the other side. And that moaning you heard, that was the wind. <laughs> That was a dirty trick, Slick Palm said. Well, you obviously failed your intelligence role, not your thief's intelligence, yours, Chambers. And we're talking critical fail here. You can't use my naturally low intelligence. You can only use Slick Palm's, and he's a 12. 12 IQ, snorted Lefty Limb. That's about right, Slick Palm <laughs> turned on lef- Lefty. And you all followed me down 3,000 steps. Oh, yeah, shit. Slick Palm crossed his arms and glared at Sweepy. That crit fail shouldn't have counted. Sweepy leaned forward over her cardboard barrier. You really want to go down the rabbit hole of the existential quagmire of rolling up a character, uh, rolling up a character who's smarter than you are? Really, Chambers? You know where that takes us, don't you? Okay, okay, never mind. We go back inside and climb back up the steps we just came down. Sure. Only this time at the first landing above, why, there's 200 zombie goblins. I take my seven-foot sword and rush. No room in there to swing it, Gonad. Fine. I sheathe my seven-foot sword and pull out my two axes. How do you sheath your sword that is in that seven-and-a-half-foot scabbard strapped to your back? I use Plucky's ladder. But even up there, the scabbard's behind you. I... I climb up there with him, said Brickhead. But you're a dwarf, so you only reach Gonad's hip. And besides, you'd need to make a saving roll since you're scared of heights. Ranger we go that way climbs the ladder and helps Gonad sheath his sword. Okay, done. Who takes point for the grand battle of the inside staircase against the zombie goblins? I will, said Ranger we go this way. Everyone, we go this way. You reach the <laughs> you reach the foot of the steps and look up only to see that the zombie goblins are all wielding flamethrowers. They fire gouts of burning napalm pour down the steps. Uh, I try and save. No saves. What? You're in a cramped tunnel at the foot of the stairs with 10 gouts of burning napalm arcing down straight for you. You can't go left, you can't go right, you can't jump since the ceiling's too low. So, no saves, and you take 4 thousand points of damage. You've all burned up to cinders. Get her! Bellowed skulls. <laughs> they charge across the table. Oh, their charge across the table was interrupted by a soft knock upon the door. Everyone froze, and then weapons came out. I don't fucking believe it, whispered Lefty Limb. Nobody move, hissed Chambers. Maybe they'll just go away. Oh, sure, muffled, uh, drawled Muffy Slap. Like your mom did six months ago when we were on leave for that mega D&D weekend in the basement at your place? 
She didn't go away, Chambers said. She disappeared. That's different. Right. Because you painted that fucking pentagram at the foot of the stairs to make things more realistic. She ever show up again? Not yet, but we're hopeful. The knock came again. Sweepy Brogan sighed heavily and stood. <sighs> Everybody, rounds in the chambers. Safety's off. If it's another fucking exorcist, you'd turn him into spam, understood? She worked her way around the table and walked up to the door, paused for effect, and then flung it open. <laughs> it's the unholy wizard Hadrian of Mount Doom, shrieked Chambers, throwing himself to one side in a desperate save attempt. At, At oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. At ease, everyone. Barked Sweepy. It's the captain version of Hadrian, not the unholy wizard one. Left limb shifted his weapon, but did not stand down. Don't know, LT. Could be the king zombie, Hadrian. No, that was last week's campaign. Sweepy pointed out. Stand down all weapons. Safety's on. Clear your chambers. You too, chambers. <laughs> Ob obviously, we got ourselves a genuine emergency, and it'd have to be interrupting our Mondo weekend. Right, Captain? I wouldn't be here otherwise, Lieutenant. A genuine emergency. We're even now on our way to meet God. <laughs> Another damned exorcist! Screamed Stables. Gun him down! Fortunately, Hadrian made his saving throw. So there you go, and see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huge, huge thank you to Mr. Steven Erickson for sending along the expert excerpt of his uh, <laughs> amazing third Willful Child novel, The Search for Spark. Uh, uh, clearly I, uh, uh, <laughs> written with a lot of uh, <laughs> experience in these kinds of situations. Yeah, next week's non-spoiler topic, I will have Jeff Kanata judge Sweepy as a DM. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love uh, it. So fun. So much so fun. fun. Thank you, Steven. <laughs> Thank you, Steven. And uh, thanks everybody for indulging us. I thought that was a I thought that was a blast. And it's just a fun scene. I mean, if anybody's played tabletop role-playing games or Dungeons and Dragons in in particular, uh, you know that 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 barely contained chaos that is uh, a friends uh, messing with each other over the table. <laughs> yes. And man, Ranger, we go this way is such a good name. <laughs> I love Ranger. We go this way. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We got a lot to get into this week. So let's start in on the novel. Spoilers starting now for chapters eight and nine of Midnight Tides. Uh, chapter eight is one of those uh, rarities in the Malazan Book of the Fallen, uh, where it's basically just one thing for the whole chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, there's it. I, I feel like Erickson does that to hyper focus on this moment and it 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 kind of makes you feel that it's important. It's we're we we've kind of pushed aside all the other stuff. There's lots of other characters that are just sitting and waiting until we're done with this. But man, I loved chapter eight. I love uh, both of these chapters. Uh chapter eight, I really loved it. There it definitely has that 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 building tension. Yes. And like the something about the the, I agree with what you said about the importance of it, but they're also, you know, you're experiencing this mystery and sort of living within the, the mystery of like, where, what, what exactly are we doing? Why are we doing it? And yeah. who are these people sort of surrounding us is like, there's like just a tension that I felt but, but through both of these chapters that, you know, was merited for sure, but very effective. Yes. Uh, and, and. I think uh, appropriate that we just uh, listen to a D&D &D campaign because this feels like a, a true quest, right? You've been given a <laughs> quest by uh, Hanan Mosag. Mm -hmm. Go get my gift. You don't know what it is, but we're venturing into the frozen north. Uh, we have a party of adventurers. It's the Sengar brothers and uh, some yes. other folks, the Theridas and uh, somebody else. Um, Min Minik, is that who it is? Midik, Midik. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's funny that you said that my D and D campaign is literally in an ice crevasse right now. So oh, I, nice. the whole time I was reading, I was like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> familiar, <laughs> familiar." <laughs> so good. Uh, so they're walking uh, through the ice. They're they're pulling these sleds with supplies on them, uh, stepping through uh, ice that is treacherous because they they think that there's some um, melted water underneath. It's you know they're using a. a, a the end of their spears. Pulse. Yes, the end of their spears to check the ice in front of them, make sure it's safe. Very evocative, this uh, 
this journey into the unknown, into this, into danger, really. Mm-hmm. And they also know that there are these, these Jack mm-hmm. that are uh, out there that hunt the, uh, the people that dare to walk into that territory that are you know, that maim anybody that goes there, cuts off arms and legs, leaves bodies in their wake. There's just a kind of terrifying idea of these black uh, knived, you know, they, they have these black knives and they come out of the, the white of the snow and they call them like standing wolves. Yeah. I uh, love one of the things I love about the, I mean, maybe this is jumping ahead a little, I think it was interesting. Well, I'll wait. I'll wait till later actually for this. Um, I've now, now my thought's dead. I'll wait. <laughs> Please okay. continue. Sorry. So they're, they're traipsing through. They, they know about all these dangers. They're trying to, you know, look around and see if there's any evidence of anybody uh, in, in, you know, any tracks, anybody following them. They see some wolf tracks. It's kind of disturbing. They think. But they otherwise see nothing. Yeah. So they, there's not like they right. see these wolf tracks like once and they're like dang that's some big paws but otherwise there's not any wildlife and they keep saying yeah but we're like really loud so that's not really a sign of anything but there is like a spookiness building to this for sure yeah and uh also you know troll is kind of thinking about the hold of ice which is one of the holds and you know he's kind of weaving that in and and in this icy wasteland very, very cool. Mm-hmm. And then they arrive at this massive chasm, this huge crack in the ice that they say is 15 paces across. You can't leap it, can't cross it. It clearly goes like to the horizon. Like yeah. so 15 paces across, but in this like ice thing, you're not going to jump that, but there's no way to walk around. Right. So what are they going to do? Well, let's climb into it. What could go wrong? <laughs> They're like, at least we'll have a place to stay tonight. Yeah, out of the cold, kind of sheltered. They've got, they're like, we'll go down to this crevasse. And uh, it's awesome, the description too, of, of just sort of the, the mechanics of doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, the uh, pounding the, the spikes into the side of the ice and rigging the ropes and, and rappelling down. It's just what's so vivid in my mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they go in. And well, actually, only the blooded warriors go in, right? They're they, oh, and actually, all of them go in, and then blooded warriors uh, yeah. investigate further. Mm-hmm. But they get into the bottom of this crevasse, and it's like melting in there, and there's water dripping down. It was just so rad. I could like, and, I could see it. And they're they're in there in these like shallow pools of water that have a bunch of shrimps in them, and they're saying oh, the ice is dying, and there's like these big, I feel like what stalagmites. In that, th- there are pillars of salt. Sp- pillars of salt. Top. Tights is top. Mites. Yeah. But like they're pillars of uh, salt. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. That have been created. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, they see some uh, evidence that there are uh, there were other people down here. They're like, we're not the only people that have climbed down in this crevasse. This is like party crevasse where mm. <laughs> everybody hangs out. <laughs> Yo, you headed to the crevice tonight, bro. <laughs> yeah. I heard it's like it's a stampede off. down there. <laughs> Get down to those salt pillars. Yo, um, that ice is dying, bro. Lick it, <laughs> then hit it. Yeah, that was dumb. Um, <laughs> so they decide the the blooded warriors are like, well, we're gonna you guys stay here, non blooded lamos. <laughs> <laughs> you, we're gonna go. You children, what, what can go wrong? Leave the people who have never fought anything by themselves. <laughs> we'll go deeper. Yeah. Um, so they decide to, to explore explore this cavern, and um, and see, you know, try to figure out are they are there still people down here? What's mm-hmm. what's going on? Well, they and, didn't notice in, in, originally. The one guy went to scout further. Th- yeah. Threat Theranos. Th- 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 <laughs> Theridus. Theridus. Yeah. Theridus. And then he comes back and he's like, oh, dang. And so he it, grabs some people, yeah. goes ahead. And the descriptions of this room, you know, spoilers, I pulled like a huge chunk of this for my favorite quote just because of the visuals. They get to this place that's like a uh, like a, a totem or a shrine. And on the far wall of where the shrine is, is encased in the ice a full stampede of animals. Yeah. Uh the antlers are starting to protrude from the ice 
Uh, but Troll goes up and he, he peers at them and sees that many of them have fallen out and their carcasses are just rotting and thawed on the ground. But Full of flies. Full of flies. Yeah. But then also right on the other side is one of the wolves also frozen in the ice. And it's this scene of, of chaos. Um, yeah. The, the, oh. the idea of this tableau that has been frozen in time, but it's like, it was like it was flash frozen yeah. because the caribou are running the wolf's mouth is open and attacking them and it's like you know things don't freeze mid moment and yet here we are in this kind of crazy uh you know action scene that has yeah. been frozen in time and yet the edge of it is is melting and thawing so there's parts pieces animals that have fallen out and landed on the ground and uh, just and it's hundreds injury. it's hu it's hundreds of animals through yeah. the ice that you peer through uh it's amazing. And while they're there, they're looking and they're like, basically like, that's, that's crazy. How is that yeah. possible? And they're like, ice magic? And they're like, that's what the Lethry talk about. Yeah. And they're like, don't think too hard. Everybody stop thinking. Stop thinking. <laughs> Back to the camp. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. This is cool. bad. Everybody out. This is bad. Party's <laughs> over. No, party, we're right. Whatever happens, we're right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, get out. <laughs> don't, don't doubt your beliefs. Just leave. <laughs> yeah. Um, but basically, they, they're realizing that the people that were down here are not our people. They're, they're somebody else. There's some other group. What I'm also realizing is interesting is Trull. Oh, no, because Trull was, was, was traveling with Onrak. Oh, yes. sorry. I was thinking about uh, Toblakai Karsa and how he had like a similar thing. He walked in and he's like, cave seems yeah. to say some stuff. Right. Get out of Bad the cave. Stuff. Everything's fine. Uh, yeah. And yeah. this is sort of a similar moment for these mm. uh, Sengar, Sengar bros. Yeah. Good Good point. Good connection. Um, so they come out of the, the crevasse and they notice giant wolf prints, uh, tracks. They're like, oh, that's probably bad. And uh, <laughs> uh, so they, they start um, heading toward where Hanan Mosag said his gift is. And uh, as they're going, Troll is seeing the, what I interpreted as like the Aurora Borealis in yeah, the sky, me too. which is awesome. Um, and he, Troll has a dream of Mayan getting funky in the snow or in the forest, I guess it is. Was it? Did we, when we met Troll and he's talking with Onrak, didn't he talk about how he's like, man, I never, I never had a girlfriend. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we, we see more about that. And like, it, there's like, he, he talks, through like his his I think it's around this dream s section where he's like oh yeah men of mm -hmm. uh, the whatever Edur. they are yeah. the Edur, they they come to sort of their their uh, sexual maturity later and so his like frustrations at Rulad for being this way are like childish yeah. like yeah. so lo like looking through that lens it's not even like a sense of propriety it's like a sense of proprietary propriety tied with like. You've seen a kid who's like 10. He's like, oh, girls, what's your problem, dude? Yeah. Like I've his seen older brother. Why, my older brother used to play with me and all he, want, all he wants to do is hang out with girls. Yeah. Uh, yeah, ick. yeah. Yeah. So it, it's it's interesting. And Rulad's like being like a younger brother, but yeah. like having sort of these desires yep. or the impression of these desires. To me, I'm like, does that technically mean he's like more mature in a way? Uh, which it's I think is it. It's it's all interesting to sort of see that context about like who they are as like a like the characteristics of the people genetically speaking, yeah. And then what does that mean for them and their dynamic? Yeah, such a such a great point. Um, so troll, uh, uh, he he sees Rulad is sleeping on his watch. He wakes up from his dream. He sees Rulad is sleeping on his watch, and he's so mad he literally pops him in the head. With his weapon, I pictured like a golf, a golf swing yeah. with the with the back of the spear, Brutal. like just smokes him. Oof. And Rulad wakes up. He's like, "I wasn't sleeping." He's like, "I just saw you sleeping." No, no, I wasn't. I promise. I, I swear, I wasn't sleeping. Do you think that's an sleeping? interesting thing? I thought. I think so too. I can't tell if like the the shame of sleeping on watch is so deep that he's lying about it, yeah. or they say that they're like they say in the scene it could have been sorceress. And well, so maybe I there's was like pass without a trace is like what my brain is saying. <laughs> pass without a trace. Uh, yeah, I cast pass without a trace. Yeah. Um, 
what I later thought is we've we'll get to it soon, but we get this scene where Rulad encounters the crippled god in the crippled god's warren, mm-hmm. and I wonder if that happened here because I'm not really clear on the timing of when that encounter happens or it happens sort of in a warren kind of in a dreamscape almost kind of situation and i wondered if this is roulad having been plucked out of consciousness and into the crippled god's warren to have this conversation and he's like i wasn't sleeping i was so i don't know i assumed that it was we can get we can get to that i assumed it was like after he touched the sword then he died right it's like that may be more accurate yeah anyway Anyway. Uh, it's still an interesting thing of him how how adamant he is about having not fallen asleep. But Troll's like, oh, "You you failed me. Not only did you fail, I'm I'm gonna have to tell everybody about this. Your reputation's gonna suck. It's gonna reflect poorly on the whole Sengar family. Ugh, you suck so much, bro. And like the fact that he's like, I know that like you can't tell anybody's been here, but all of our food's gone." Like, so right. people definitely yes. were. And so this moment is such an uh, an interesting conflict of emotions. I felt as a reader, I definitely felt like troll in it. It's like, oh, so annoying, bro. Just do your job. Yeah. Now our food's gone. So there's real danger. So, it, you know, troll saying I'm having this outsized anger and he knows because he had that freaky dream or whatever, but the yeah. food is gone. They were here. They could have killed us. So the danger is also real, but also just knowing like, oh, clocking him one. I'm like that's super villain origin story. Stop! <laughs> yes. I'm like this is so. Yes. <laughs> oh, it is over the top. Like it's yeah. Uh, where's the empathy? Just like feel anything other than anger. But like, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it's like Roulade is uh, Trolls Newman. He's just like, <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, no matter what he does, the worst. So they finally arrive at basically the location of the. Uh, the gift, and it's this ice field with this spar, this kind of chunk of ice is the way I imagined it, uh, inside of which they see a sword, which clearly is Hanan Mossag's gift. It's this mottled two-handed sword that looks strange. It's blackened, and it kind of looks fractured. It doesn't look like a well-made sword. It looks like it's, you know, it's like they must- It has they, like, they, yeah, sorry. It has like veins of some kind of ore that was not able to be like polished in the fashioning of it. So it looks messed up because of these. I think my brain says like we've seen obsidian a couple times brought up through this. So my brain says maybe they're like weird magical obsidian chunks of something. But yeah, we don't know. Maybe Otachiro? Isn't that red? I I mean, it's like red, like they they call it like blood weaved through. I don't know if it's actual blood or if it's redness. Mm. I don't know. We we don't, still a question mark on what Mm -hmm. the sword is for sure. Uh, But they're like, how are we going to get it? How are we going to get it out of the ice? And uh, Theradas is like, well, or Benadas is like, well, I can call shadow wraiths and put shadow rays in there. (laughs) Put them in your spear and then you do, you do it. Yeah. You stab it with the spear, but I'll infuse the spear with, you know, ghosts. Ghosts. (laughs) (laughs) What could go wrong? Um, I thought this moment was so interesting, too, because they they go for it and they're like, but isn't it going to kill all the ghosts? Yeah. And aren't those like our ancestors? And then fear goes, not our ancestors. Yeah. He knows the truth of these wraiths. Right. That we, which we found out are the Tistandi, right? Yes. Yes. But that's interesting that fear's like, I, I, how does not, he know? Yeah. How, why, how does he know why? Yeah. Fear, what are you not telling us, bro? Man. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, mm. uh, it basically works because the spar explodes and uh, the, the sword is released. It slams into the ground and uh, they're like, okay, everybody remember. What's the one rule? Don't cross the streams. <laughs> yeah, don't touch. Right? Don't, don't touch, touch the sword. It. Yeah. That's the that's the very, very important, very, very, very important rule. Uh, unfortunately, right at that same moment, the Jek attack. Mm-hmm. So all these Jek start coming out. And it's such a rad scene. Like they're attacking with antler weapons. Uh, and like 
throwable antler weapons, which I, is rad. So, so dope. And it just is like, oh, who is in this crevasse? It's like these animals falling out. You know, they're harvesting it from there because there's not other wildlife around. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. I loved it. So, so cool. And a, a really neat action sequence there. Completely kind of uh, overwhelmed by the Jack. There's so many of them. They're killing them, but they keep coming. And um, Bonatus is like, overwhelmed that it just completely uh trampled by tons of them and then he unleashes his magic and throws them all off and mm-hmm. Rulad disappears they're like where's Rulad? i can't I can't look for him too many jack to fight mm-hmm. fight 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 um they they slay a giant wolf and then there's more coming and like 20 more jack are climbing up the slope and uh they're like oh uh, uh troll is like we're we're doomed mm-hmm. they're gonna they're, they're just there's too many of them we're gonna be murdered and then roulade comes out of the white Some kind of yeah yeah of the, uh, you know there's like a hill so like the, i picture this thing is sort of between like there's like the ice spike in the middle of this thing so there's like ostensibly another side to a yeah. hill that he sort of emerges from like leaps over them like ah i'm gonna i'm gonna do something and then all he he, he grabs the sword yeah and he kills, he like beheads one person and stabs somebody else and then immediately gets stabbed like 10 times and his yeah. dies. Yeah. But even though they kill him and are clearly winning, the Jek all retreat and leave. Mm-hmm. And Troll's like, they were winning. Why did they leave? What's, what's up with that? Yeah. Hmm. But Rulat is dead. Definitely dead. No chance at him not being dead. Super dead. Definitely, Definitely felt dead. the pulse. No pulse. There's yeah. nothing else that that 100% could mean dead. other than dead. <laughs> 100%. Take it to the bank where you get coins. Dead. <laughs> uh, but uh, they're, Troll and Fear are like, oh, little uh, sticky wicket here. Um, not only is our brother dead, but he's still holding the sword that we were told not to touch. Mm-hmm. And it won't come out of his hand. Can't. Like, That's quite the death grip, buddy. <laughs> Just let go, brother. <laughs> and um, they're like, well, maybe his fingers are frozen solid. His whole body seems frozen. That's, hey, by the way, weird because mm-hmm. it would take a while for somebody to freeze solid. But I guess again, he is. Our, our, <laughs> our, our classic tactic when dealing with something we don't understand. Let's not think about it now. La, 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 la. <laughs> Can't handle that. Not going to think about it. Just cover him with a sheet and we'll move on. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't want to stink. He can put some snow around him. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. We'll mourn. We'll get back. Chief, Chief will tell us what to do about this. <laughs> Chief makes decisions. Chief. We so, follow decisions. So empathetic, Chief. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they uh, they set out knowing that Roulade did in fact get blooded. He is, he will be celebrated as a hero because he did murder some people. Like everybody wants to murder and now mm. he's murdered. Thumbs up to Roulade. <laughs> uh, Tr- Troll still is like, why did he grab the sword? We were told not to grab. That seems like a bad choice. Yeah. Uh, really dumb things that he did. Why did he do all that stuff? And the whole time fear is being, it, it's it, it's so difficult to read. Yeah, fear is like is he just overwhelmed and prideful of the Sengar name? Is right. he overwhelmed because Rulai died and he only cares about being like it doesn't matter he's dead now so we're just going to honor him? Or is he overwhelmed because he knows he's complicit in something? Um, I we don't know because what what are the things that you and I sort of failed to talk about? Um, do you remember the dinner they had where Udinas dropped the plate and then yeah. they grabbed his hands? Yeah, yeah. Right before that, Roulade was like, the chief at the start of this war is going to have to make a sacrifice. He's going to have to slit somebody's throat and it's going to be mine, isn't it? Oh, right. Yeah, right. Is, He's like, I'm going to be the one that gets murdered, aren't aren't I? And, and they're like, no, 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 not, no. No. Oh, no. You. <laughs> um and it, so yeah. is this 
I mean, it was an accident. Was this Roulade accepting that fate or some kind of destiny? Is this him trying to do it on his own terms, feeling like haunted by that? There's so many little questions. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> That's really interesting to bring that up and, con- and connect those those points. Um, I feel like Roulade in general is a mystery and clearly is being set up to be part of a super villain God's. origin story, bro. Yeah. yeah. So I think I we're going to learn a lot more. immediately validated by my feeling for him in that moment yeah. <laughs> with yeah. the next scene. <laughs> oh, totally. Uh, anyway, so uh, Bonatus is also uh, messed up. He's got a broken hip. He's being pulled on one of the sleds. Can't walk, can't use magic, can't mend himself, uh, can't mend anybody else. Um, and so they, they're heading back, uh, home through the snow again. And, uh, troll is like, I'll be in the back. I'm going to watch our six. I got our six. But does troll choose that or fear being the eldest? I think he's the one who says, you go here, you go here, you go here, troll. You have to make it the back. It's the only thing that makes sense. Yeah. It is it. Or is it just, what does fear know? (laughs) Interesting. Interesting. I didn't I didn't really get that sense of fear sort of orchestrating all this, but you're absolutely right. It's just a possibility. Yeah. Um, so Troll is in the back, trailing behind, and it, the the weather is so intense that this sort of whiteout conditions of mm-hmm. of this blizzard, this horrible frozen wasteland, that he's kind of can't see the people even close in front of him. And he gets to the point where he's like, did they go left? Did they go right? Which direction? Ah, I'm gonna go right, <laughs> and just keeps walking. And he's 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 losing feeling in his fingers. He's like, it's just horrible. I mean, I, I was completely horrified by the notion of of just getting lost in a whiteout. Oh my god, it's just such uh, a nightmare. And like uh, the feeling of like. Like what he's going through, like he's having this emotional reckoning on top of the physical one of being like, why do I feel this way about Rulad? Now Rulad's gone. Oh my God, Rulad's gone. And then sort of like this cyclical rage and confusion and frustration on top of like the physical, where am I? Confusion and frustration. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was an incredibly powerful sequence. So he's at the back of the pack, lost track of, of his companions, isolated alone. And the Jack use that moment to pounce. They attack him and he fights them off with his, with his sword, his spear. He, he breaks his spear, killing a wolf. He's slicing, he's dicing. He's just sort of attacking out of blind hope for su- survival. Uh, and like, importantly, he's like, all right, they're going to attack. Here's my sword. Thick. And then yeah. walks forward, and I think he braces the spear in the ground or something like yeah. that, so that the wolf charges him and like just gets stabbed and shatters it. So rad. And then he knows that he's going to get knocked somehow and grabs the sword. And then he's like, why did that happen? Why did I put my sword down? Why did I get knocked this perfect distance? Did I know that was going to happen? Am I losing it? It's like, I don't know, maybe, probably not, but <laughs> feels yeah. like it. Uh, <clears throat> then he wakes up. On the sled, out of the snow, he is next to Benadas, next to Rulad's body. Uh, everybody else is carrying him. He, they found him somehow. We don't know exactly how, how that happened. It's and he like stumbled past a threshold. Yeah, and so I feel like this whole ice wastes. There's like ma- still con- continuing to have some dwindling magic from before because this ice field. Th- this must be where that. And uh, that initial scene happened between Scabandari and Silkus Ruin. Mm. So I imagine there's still residual magic. And I picture it sort right. of like him pushing past this threshold of where the magic would Yeah, stop. this is like Gothos released the ice sheets here, right? That's what we saw in that first pr- uh, yes. prelude. Yeah. So cool. So cool. Um, and then at the by the end, even though Troll has been saved, he sort of has this weird moment where he wishes everybody died. He's like, we should have all died. I kind of wish we had. Yeah. He just he's got, he's got some kind of sense about yeah. the sword and the situation. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we I skipped over it, but even before that, there's all these moments where, you know, as they were even approaching it, Troll keeps saying like, this is bad. Why are we even doing this? Why this sword? I got bad vibes about this sword. 
I got bad vibes about this whole quest. Does you anybody be doing know it. more yeah. things, Fear? Do you know more things? And Fear's yeah. like, hmm, what? Mm, this way. <laughs> and everybody's like, no, Chief, tell us to do it. We do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's chapter eight. Chapter nine <sighs> starts with, with all, who we yeah. know is the crazy demon baby inside uh inside <laughs> Udnas, right? Yeah. It's but this is not a, a wraith. This is not a wyvil. This is a person, I'm guessing. Yeah. Person. I look, here so I don't I was like with all. We've definitely heard that name before. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I guess we know him as a cripple god's little minion, I guess. I did not put together where we do it. I knew you'd oh, really? bring it, and then I was just like, eh, "Let's get through." Well, this we game. know <laughs> we know that the Wyvils like used to be. They're also uh, Tistandi spirits that got transformed talking, through the betrayal, right? Through the betray. The, all the all all of the all the Wyvils did. I, I thought. I assume you're right because you've got the guide, but no, I don't remember that. The guide doesn't tell me anything about this, but oh. the. That's my recollection of it, but I could totally be wrong. Oh. Um, is that we know that the we know that the the wraiths were created because of the betrayal, yeah, and their anguish. I thought we also knew that the because Wyvil's kind of like a demon itself, right? It's like a like a tiny dragon. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. I, anyway, it's a person. So maybe the what with all is a soul taken? Cuz like are you not thinking of cuz I first thought oh this is wither. Oh my god, those confused? Cuz is wither, wither inside Udnas? He's not inside him, but he's in his shadow. I take back everything I said. Uh I was under the impression the entire time that we were it was it was that character. Oh, that it was wither. I was wither, like wither with all. I actually went, oh, Stephen, with all wither. Come on. <laughs> I didn't do that. I just was wrong. And thank oh, you for okay. correcting me. Apologies. Erase no the last three minutes of discussion because I was so dumb. <laughs> it's not dumb. It's like close names. And with with all, I was when I read it, I was basically like, I know I've seen this name before. Yeah. I assume that oh yeah, he's the crippled god's little minion. Because he, right. I know he's got a little minion, but that That's is right. all I recall. I can't, rem I can't recall with all. <laughs> anyway, they arrive at the crippled god, who's uh, typically creepy, and sitting well, there's there. Well, like a buoyancy to it, right? So they, they don't ar arrive. Uh, they a, a gray body washes up on the beach, and with all's there, being like, <laughs> yeah. "Hey, buddy." <laughs> yeah, that's hey, right. Get up! The gulls are gonna get your ass. Uh, yeah. and he's yeah. like. Ah, ah, he's like, you're fine. You're fine. You're not actually in pain. Yeah. And it, it, as soon as that happened, I was like, oh, that's Rulad. That's Rulad. And yeah. he's going to be evil. I knew it. <laughs> Boy, you uh, you were really one step ahead this whole time. I I was just completely misinterpreting uh, the with all wither thing. And mm. so I had a completely different take on the scene in my that's head. That's so funny. Uh, anyway. Uh, Cripple God pontificates about the notion of peace, which is amazing, but also very funny in, in that he's like, peace, man. Nobody wants it, right? It sucks, uh, right? Are you with me with all? And with all's like, no. Peace, no. Uh, he, he's like, whatever you say is correct. And he's like, you're saying that because you don't want to make me mad. Say what you think. And he's like, well, then you're not, right? And he's like, yeah. shut up. <laughs> yeah. It's an awesome thing where you don't usually see that. I just thought, I love that little tidbit of like the, <laughs> the uh my grand uh thesis statement on the universe <laughs> i the god who his machinations are moving in one direction because i believe a certain thing right my minion uh no no, no sir. sir no no not yes, not, no, not, no, not on that sir. page just not <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not with you. I'm and gonna. I'll get you more like your seeds, so you can have. Yeah, your I mean, I'll do time, whatever you say, but like, but like <laughs> nah. Fundamentally disagree with the premise. People, people <laughs> like peace. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very funny. Um, and uh, the crippled god is like, "Hey, Rulad, uh, here's a sword. You want a sword?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, sick. I love swords and I love killing." And we have, with all thinking, hmm, that's a little bit too much ambition. 
in Rulad's eyes. Mm-hmm. He likes killing a little too much, maybe. He wants the like glory that he is constantly. Yeah. Every single person that we've seen interact with him. Yeah. Other than even other, I would say other than Mayan, but we don't understand his relationship with Mayan. But every right. single person that we've seen has. I think Rulat has basically gotten a verbal spanking every yeah. time he's in a scene. Yeah. And, the and one he's constantly where, referred to as unblooded. You know, you're like, you're, you're less than because you haven't killed insult anybody. Insult after insult after yeah. insult. And like his, there's the scene with his dad again at that dinner table who like yells at him, Mayan, the one person who like, ooh, are, will, are they, aren't they? Yeah. It's like when he's getting yelled at, she's like, Udinas like notices that she's like loving that he's being yelled at. And I don't know if that's like a kink or she's just like, I hate this guy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Anyway, very interesting. And and we see, I, I think we're continuing to see the crippled god sort of assemble his super team, you know, his house. Yeah. <clears throat> so did we next... hear what did we hear what role? No. Yeah. Okay. No. We don't even see him like sort of formally offer a role. He's just like, here's a sword. And he's like, Yeah, sick. I love swords. But, yeah. He says. This your first death was pretty brutal. Will your second death be better? Yeah, probably so not. Cool. <laughs> probably not. So true. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna suck for you for a long time. Ooh, yikes! Yeah. If only we could see a scene where it totally sucks for him. Anyway, <laughs> um, so we check back in with Saren Pedak, who's mm-hmm. like still sitting around waiting. It's uh, they're waiting for the uh, Lethari delegation to arrive. Uh, it's raining. Uh, everybody, Brooke, Brooke, the pale though, very happy, feels like, oh God, thank God. We don't have to have war. And Saren's <laughs> like, oh, it's nice to have at least one merchant who's not hoping for war, you know? Yeah. Pretty and Brooke cool. seems like, I mean, he seemed like such a tool up till now, but now he's kind of like, let's get my ingots. Time to yeah. try and sell some iron or whatever. I just whatever. want to make a little money and not have a <laughs> bunch of people die in a war. And, and, not, not a terrible person. Yeah, and Hull is like, I'm so anxious. I'm going to the forest. I'll be back. Hull is a big question mark for me too. He's like, she's like, he peaced out because that dude's. This self sorry. Let me tell you, I met that guy. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Uh, tell me more about how hard it is for you, bro. <laughs> I'll be back. All right. I can't make the. An uh, animal dog doesn't want war. All right. I now hate these guys and like <laughs> these guys. Yeah. Um, so, but they kind of spy the return of the the questing party, the Sengar brothers, and they're like, "That's not good." Uh, looks like a body underneath a sheet, uh, holding a sword. That's bad. Bad news. Yeah. And she's like, Saren. Or she's like, Brooke, come here. Uh, let's uh, let's spy on them. Brooke's like, that seems bad. They're gonna see us spying on them. She's like, shut up. Just I'm, come with me. I'm allowed to be here, kind of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and they overhear this very public disagreement where Hanag Mosag is like, what? I told you one rule. Don't <laughs> touch the sword. And they're like, that's kind of secondary to the fact that, that my brother's dead. And then mom and dad show up and they're like, oh, our son is dead. And he's like, it died. I want that sword. Give me that he's sword. Like, he's like, what about my gift? It wasn't my <laughs> gift to you. It was mine. Give me that sword. And they're when? like, well, I would happily give it to you, but his fingers won't unclench. He's like, cut off them fingers. <laughs> Chop <laughs> them fingies. Get give them me, out of there. Give me sword, fingies and all. I don't care what we need to cut. And mom and dad are like, oh, uh, sir, no, you did not. Yeah. I did not hear you just say that. <laughs> he is blooded, which means we do not chop Name him up. the body. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there's a, a big disagreement about it. Um, and everybody sees, which th- there seems to be some distinction in this culture of like, if stuff's public, then we all get to know all of it. It's very funny. It's like- I love that. If, if something public happens, the resolution also has to be public. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, you know what? The check's out. <laughs> yeah, check's out. It. If you fight with your boyfriend in front of the entire club, <laughs> then we all get to we all get an email finding out how this all worked out. If you're hitting the crevasse one night <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you have 
a disagreement. This is the opposite of what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, what yes, happens it's... in Vegas, all of Vegas gets to know the rest of. <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> yeah, and beyond. Exactly. Uh, but Trell comes in. He's the voice of reason here being like, all right, no matter what, boys got to thaw. Yeah. And so what if we just took a breather and then saw yeah. if when he thought out, we could probably the sword and then everybody could be happy. But for now, everybody needs to shut up. Troll with the plan that they constantly go to, which is la, 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 yeah. la, la. like, <laughs> let's just postpone the decision making process. <laughs> think about it later. Is this uncomfortable for everyone? Yes. Should we think about it now? No. Definitely let's just, not. Definitely everybody not. <laughs> kick the can down the road. <laughs> everybody, um, ah, dinners. Hmm, who's cooking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The one thing we do know is we got to start preparing that body. And I love how in earlier chapters, you and I were talking, I think it was you who said, um, how cool is it that we are learning about this, you know, death ritual. And it just seems like a really awesome little tidbit of information. It's like, ah, no, it was a setup. It was a setup the whole time. For like how laborious and like, yeah, and and to like plus one it in such a massive way. This whole end of this chapter is so spooky it turned into a full-on horror story my stomach was like turning i like finished the chapter and i just put my hands on my face and i was like (sighs) and jeff was like are you okay and i was like you gotta catch up (laughs) (laughs) i mean we've seen obviously we've seen very disturbing things in this series before you know uh the (laughs) penan dominion uh um a penny and domen the, yeah. is is a very disturbing thing. We saw a, you know, we saw uh, an, an entire building filled with bodies to the point where it was bulging at the sides because right? they were swelling up. Yeah, gross. Yeah, awful things. I feel like none of them sort of dipped into true horror mode. Yeah, like this. I mean, it was it was horrific, but it wasn't like a horror story. I wasn't like my heart was pounding reading this. Yeah. And like everything, like the setup, it's like as soon as they're like, Udinasco, like, I trust you and only you to prepare the body. I was like, yeah. I just, and we've seen him talk, like, I'm like, I just, I know where this is going. Just like when you watch <laughs> a horror movie, like, you know, certain things are going to happen. Even if you don't know exactly what's happening, you know, something is going to happen. Yeah. And that tension of him pulling it over. Oh, he doesn't get the help of the other widows. He has to do it by himself. And yeah. like the tiptoeing forward of this, how slowly we t- spend so much more time thinking about the perfect heat of the coins. The yeah. eyeballs don't explode. It's like so much more explicit about these little details. And the whole time I'm like, he's not going to really touch his skin. He's not really going to do Oh my gosh. He's really doing it. Oh my gosh. Oh my yeah. gosh. Oh my and gosh. And he's doing it. It's taking forever. He doesn't even lose his track of time because it's such monotonous. 163 gold coins fused to the skin. He's doing it. He's waxing everything, putting wax in all the orifices, waxing a, a, a layer of wax coat on the body turning it over he's we we learn about this device this lever that lets him rotate the body like it's a pig on a spit and even like the the very beginning like the first thing he's like i already filled the nose and mouth with wax yeah but that was the first thing part of me is like i mean he's must he must be he he is dead right yeah but if he's not he's gonna be because you need those to breathe yeah oh it is and just the the description of udnas's labor craft his labor yeah is so intense and and beautiful and like the smell of it and how he hasn't eaten he doesn't remember how long it's been but he hasn't eaten because the smell ruins his appetite you know it's just uh, it's so evocative so intense and then of course (laughs) it gets horror show where well, first, first of all, we're back yeah, to Troll. Cuts, cuts back out. Yeah. Troll is like, you know, he's thinking about how poorly Hanan Mosag handled that situation. Like, why would he confront mom and dad in the street and tell them these horrible th- – like, I, I really liked this guy. I was starting to really think that we had a good warlock king and, you know, I thought he was a decent person. And he, I, I, now I kind of think he's a doofus because he handled this so badly. Yeah. And he's like – and there were strangers there. Yeah. 
Like there are yeah, people he, who don't need to know more about our culture than we give them and he's giving them everything. And, yeah. So and, he spotted Saren and Baruch. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the uh, earlier in the book, he uh, like I think when they're leaving the ice fields, it's like it's, everything is so weird. Like I wouldn't want – it doesn't make sense that Hanan Mossad would even want this thing unless he's changed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that was like the most like – I think it's pretty clear that he's – I think it's pretty clear that he's changed. We don't know how, we don't know why, but he's changed. Oh, and there's one last thing that we forgot to say in the ice fields. Fear or somebody was like, his demon's been here. His like water demon from the ocean has been here under the ice. He's oh, like, I, I can sense that. The, I can sense the magic. I don't so even recall that. He's like, this demon that he has is like, he's casting out mm. to like go to these other places. Anyway, sorry. That's Interesting. Well, then fear shows up at Troll's house and- uh, he's like, um, here's the thing. Hanan Mossag is really mad at us. He thinks we betrayed him by touching the sword that he explicitly said, do not touch. And also, uh, he's talking with mom and dad and they're negotiating what's going to happen. How many fingers he gets to cut off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and he also, they're like the Jek were soul taken. They actually transformed back and forth from those wolves. And so this he's is, like, that's pretty intense. That's the thing that I was going to talk about earlier that I think is so fascinating. They go through this fight with the Jack. Are they not all soul taken? Why did any of them try to attack as humans instead of giant wolves? It feels like wolves would be mm. way better to be as a well, pack I think it's like them. a smattering of wolves, a smattering of people. You know, you mix yeah. it. Yeah, you see, keep it spicy. <laughs> yeah. um, but what I love is like, we're seeing more and more like, that there's like these language differences. There's yeah. things that we know that we don't know that we know yeah. because they have a different name. Yeah. Uh, they uh, we call them the Nacht or something. And they're like yeah. the Bacaral. The Bacaral, yeah. And then we have the this the Jek. And there is some other word that is, oh, the houses holds thing. Yeah, right. It's uh yeah, it's interesting. And then there's this lovely moment where fear actually tries to sort of reassure and empathize with Troll. And he's like, well, I'm usually the guy doing that. That's interesting. My brother actually tried to make me feel better. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so then we're back with Udinas. <sighs> and he's like, oh, I'm so exhausted. This is taking forever. Uh, okay, only a little bit of wax left to do. I've covered the entire body with gold coins. I'm just going to, I don't know. I'm just going to turn my back to the body. I'm just going to look over here not look at it for just a second. I mean, he goes to get possibly happen because he's totally dead and definitely dead. Not, not <laughs> possibly happen. So I'm just going to look over here. Uh, and then it's a crickle crack crunch of the wax breaking off. And he's like, dang it. Like his first reaction I like is not like, uh, it's freaky. He's like, ah. <laughs> Well, he said that it, it's not uncommon for the rat wax to break in this process. Like, But he said it like a plate-sized chunk of it falls <laughs> off. And so he's like, yeah. whatever. He's like, I'll flip them over and then I'll fix it. And he goes to flip them. And like the, in my brain, like the camera work back and forth, the tension of him pulling on this thing, cutting to Ugh. the body, like so heavy, covered in coins, trying to flip it. And like the slow, like cracking noises. And it's just, it's so perfectly set up to be, even from like the foreshadowing of like what the body looked like when they unwrapped it of the face being in that yeah, scream. Yeah, him being this scream. Yeah. Oh. I can't Dude, just, it I is got so just horrible. About it. it is it is such a vivid Gruesome. image of the a, a terrifying monster from your worst nightmare, you know? Uh, and and him being all alone with this body like just the idea of a body coming back to life when you're all alone dressing it for death, but the way it's dressed for death and that the particular thing of this thing, this wax covered, coin covered monstrosity. Oh man. And like unbelievable. And like instantly the thought is not only, oh, that's horrifying, but I've been torturing this body. Yeah. Yes. What have, it, like, then it what comes have to life, I done? Yeah. It comes to life and immediately starts screaming. It's just howling. And then we just immediately cut away to everybody hearing screams ring out through the city, through the town, you know? Yeah. It's, it's a troll's like, um, Hey, 
Anybody also hearing howling Yells? screams? And from- Fear's like, what are you doing? He's like, it's not me, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, the House of the Dead is screaming? Is Ugh. that that's not a good that's not good. And like right? the again, like from this like exterior POV of like walking up and like troll seeing other people, some people just running like they're yeah terrified getting to the door and like people are at the door a feather witch is there and she turns around just looking mad with fear like totally wide-eyed everybody freaking out and being like what does it look like what does it look like what's happening and peeking in there and Udnas is there basically cooing to Rulad that was the most amazing I mean this whole sequence is utterly gobsmacking just Mm -hmm. of how expertly it is conveyed and how drawn in I was and like it, it it becomes this breathless page turner of a moment of like I can't believe what I'm reading I can't believe what I'm reading but then like the hard pivot to Udnas showing this level of sort of beautiful compassion and tenderness we have literally not seen anybody treat Rulad that way right the entire book and having this be the moment of Udnas showing this kindness, like not only for like whatever he's going through, just trying to be anything to him, but him being like, your brothers are here, (laughs) your brothers. And him being like, no, it's you. I need you. Dude, it it is. I mean, I have, uh, you know, as a dad, I have comforted my young children in moments of, you know, they, they hurt themselves or they're, ill or they wake up in the middle of the night uh with a nightmare or they you know they're, they're they throw up and it's, they don't know what's going on with their body and you you try to hold them close and comfort them and that just that act and how it's conveyed and how we're seeing it through troll's eyes we're not in udnas's point of view mm. we're in troll's point of view and he's looking at it as a third party like observing this tenderness yeah and he like the things that he's saying of like it's gonna be i'm gonna you know you're i'm gonna i have to do some things now i I apologize i didn't mean to do this i didn't know you it's like it's such a the reaction to the horror scene is ah kill it with fire you know yes yeah run away stab it destroy it right Mm -hmm. the body is alive but no udnas the slave reacts with beauty and empathy and tenderness and it is like that I, the act of him like cradling him and being like those are coins do you feel the weight they're coins do you understand i was doing this i was preparing you for death yeah. and him like the image of him cradling his head well he takes the knife and the tension again of just popping the coins off oh. of his eyes and uh troll seeing him hold his eyes closed being like don't open them don't yeah. open them. They're blistered. They're hor- just keep them uh, closed. You're here. I'm here. Your brothers are here. Ah, uh, powerful. Powerful. And then Rulad says, "I don't want my brothers. I want you. I want Udnas. Yeah. I want. I want you." And Troll having this amazing moment too, where Udnas is like, "I'm so tired. I just want to leave." And he's like, "Can you stay a little longer? He needs you. Can you care for him? Can you stay? Like not." I am your master. I order you to yeah. stay here. It's, are you able to do a little more? Yeah. And Udnas being like, I have no idea what I said. I don't yeah. know what happened. He's like, I'm so tired. I'm blacking then- out. I, he's like, I wake up to the sound of my own voice, which is what a, what a powerful notion. Yeah. And then him like, uh, him saying, uh, Troll's able to say, like, Rulad, we're here. And he, he's like, Udnas, he's he's given everything. Yeah. He 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 will be with you. You need to release him now. And then he yeah. lets him go. And Udnas goes and like crawls into a corner to go sleep. And the moment before he sleeps, he says his face changes into yeah. some kind of mask of horror or uh, 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 some kind of emotion. I forget what it is, but like. I I picture like twisted and like, oh my God, that was the most messed up thing. Anguish, anguish. Um, Before he effectively passes out just next to a barrel in the house of the death. Yeah, he kind of, it described as sort of taking on the form or echoing the form of 
Ulad Ulad. himself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And we have this interesting moment too, where everybody shows up and sees it and the feather witch freaks out. I feel like there's something there to that. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know what this means for Rulad, Re the crippled God, right? Because he is now obviously crippled himself in some way or, or, you know, changed and, and, um, his body has been uh, destroyed in some way, but the, I, I'm I I do not yet know the connection between oh you are um, recruited in a way or I'm giving you the sword and you are you know my pally my I'm in my stable yeah to the waking up from death but the sword is still in his hand. Like yeah. he still has not relinquished the sword. Mm-hmm. So I think that's. And, and he does say something about it. He says, he says like, this is what he was talking about or something. Yeah. That to everybody around is like incomprehensible. And to him yeah. that like through that screaming, through that like absolute physical pain, the weight of the coins making it hard for him to breathe. Oh, oh yeah. There, there's oh. still like this hunger that with all sees in him that I think even pierces through everything that is like that sharp ego driven. I've been, I've been done wrong my whole life. I will all yeah. prove them sort of slices through it for one beat. That's like, Oh yeah. Super villain origin story. <laughs> man, he's a uh, coin man. <laughs> coin. Oh, hello. Coin man. <laughs> you cannot strike me down. I will block your blows with my coin armor. Oh no, the wax. Um, <laughs> um the uh, the other thing that I keep thinking about too is that all of this ends with Troll being locked in a in a hor- being shorn and locked in a I know. cage, right? Like I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, every single time, I mean, as soon as he was like, like we're on the ice journey and he's like, does Hanan Moseg, does he have our best interest in mind? I was like, this is yeah. why you're getting chained up. And then it sort of moves on. I'm like, oh, maybe not, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> incredible, incredible scene, incredible yeah. moment, incredible image. Like never have I experienced anything quite like this. And it's so beautifully set up where we learn about this death ritual and it all makes so much sense as to why it would have to happen and why we would need it that way. And he's definitely going to use the big heavy gold coins because he's, he's, he's blooded now and he's a, he's of Royal or, you know, high birth. Noble. Um, yeah. Noble. Ah, oh. incredible. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, so that's, uh, that's chapters eight and nine. Uh, this, this novel is just crushing it, man. This novel is like, it's so good. It's so good. Like <laughs> sitting down to read yesterday, I, my brain was like, oh, you know what I'll do? I'll read one of the chapters and I'll wake up early. I'll shower so my hair will be dry, which I clearly didn't do. And then, <laughs> but I could, I could not, I couldn't stop reading yesterday. Yeah. I just, that was it. I was, I was in. That's how it's been every week. And as you mentioned, we have some of our favorite passages from our, these two sections. All right, my favorite passage is all of chapter eight i'll begin <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then most of chapter nine <laughs> yeah. uh let me get it. i only have two and honestly that i uh that i pulled okay but... uh let me get to it so i have like the one well should i read it uh, yes you should okay it's longer that's okay um oops that's not it uh it is the Section. I I really do have so many. Okay, that's not it. Here we go. Here we go. So this is just the description of the sort of tableau in the ice. Oh, I right. just thought yeah, it was so, so cool. A sheer plane of ice, a hundred paces or more across, rising in a tilted overhang a wall in which countless beasts had been caught in mid-stampede, frozen in full flight. 
antlers projected from the ice, heads and shoulders still solid and immobile, and forelegs lifted or stretched forward. Frost-rhymed eyes dully reflected the muted blue-green light, deeper within the blurred shapes of hundreds more. Stunned by the vista, Troll slowly walked closer round the altar, half expecting at any moment to see the charging beasts burst into sodden motion, on rushing to crush them all beneath countless hooves. As he neared, he saw heaped bodies near the base. Beasts that had fallen out from the retreating ice had thawed, eventually collapsing into viscid pools. Tiny black flies rose in clouds from the decaying flesh and hide, swarmed towards Troll as if determined to defend their feast. He halted, waved his hands until they dispersed and began winging back to the rotted carcasses. The beasts, caribou, had been running on snow, a packed layer knee-deep above the seabed. He could still see the panic in their eyes. And there, smeared behind an arm's length of ice, the head and shoulders of an enormous wolf, silver-haired and amber-eyed, running alongside a caribou, shoulder to shoulder. The wolf's head was raised, jaws open, close to the victim's neck. Canines as long as Troll's thumb gleamed beneath peeled back lips. Nature's drama. Life unheeding of the cataclysm that rushed upon it from behind or above. The brutal hand of a god as indifferent as the beasts themselves. So awesome. You know, as you were reading that, I just flashed, maybe you had already thought this, but I didn't even think it until, because you only find out retroactively, but is that, is the reason that's a shrine is because that wolf is a soul taken? I didn't think about that, but yeah, you I would not be surprised if they're like literally visiting their their yeah. comrade. They're like frozen soul taken bro. Yeah. Mm. Uh oh, shoot. I dropped. Hang on. <laughs> okay, sorry. All right. Uh so I have uh a couple of here's this is uh fear after their their brother has died, uh, talking about death. Death cannot be struggled against, brother. It ever arrives, defiant of every hiding place, of every frantic attempt to escape. Death is every mortal's shadow, his true shadow, and time is its servant, spinning that shadow slowly round until what stretched behind one now stretches before him. Mm. Mm. Time, time changes death from being this thing that's in your in your wake to being the thing that you is right right there ahead of you. Uh, yeah. So so evocative. I love, I love it. it. Uh, I have so many. Little, little ones from through the ice chapter, but I think I'm going to just skip to this other one because it's also related to, to, to death. Um, uh, this is after Rulad has died and this is troll sort of thinking about it. Does any of it matter? I did not trust Rulad Sangar long before his failure on night watch. That is the truth of it. I knew doubts. His thoughts could take him no further. Anguish, anguish rose in a flood, burning like acid, as if he had raised his own demon, hulking and hungry, and could only watch as it fed on his soul. Gnawing regret and avid guilt, remorse as an unending feast. We are doomed now to give answer to his death again and again, countless answers to crowd the solitary question of his life. Is it our fate then to suffer beneath the siege of all that can never be known? Suffer beneath the siege of all that can ever be known. Oof. It's and like just that feeling of summoning your own demon of of like yeah. your surviving guilt plus guilt for the way you treated somebody while they were alive, but now you will never know everything about them, and you will never know. It's like peace with like you cannot reconcile the feelings you felt for them when they were alive. It's just ah, it's good. Well, funny that you should bring up peace. Because uh, I wanted to read uh, the Crippled God's little treatise on peace, which I thought was so beautifully said and kind of, I feel, uh, certainly uh, speaks to uh, a facet of our culture today or mm -hmm. not today, but in the last 30, uh, 40 eternity. years. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> 
peace. This is the crippled God speaking peace. Warm yourself, warrior, while I tell you of peace. History is unerring, and even the least observant mortal can be made to understand through innumerable repetition. Do you see peace as little more than the absence of war? Perhaps, on a surface level, it is just that. But let me describe the characteristics of peace, my young friend. A pervasive dulling of the senses, a decadence afflicting the culture, evinced by a growing obsession with low entertainment, the virtues of extremity, honor, loyalty, sacrifice, are lifted high as shoddy icons, currency for the cheapest of labors. The longer peace lasts, the more these words are used and the weaker they become. Sentimentality pervades daily life. All becomes a mockery of itself and the spirit grows restless. Ooh, Can't have baby. too much peace. No, too much peace. Otherwise, you stick with low entertainment, like podcasts <laughs> entertainment. and That's books. Right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so good. Oh, man. Uh, amazing. Amazing chapters. Amazing, amazing chapters. chapters. And uh, I believe we have two more next week, right? We're not into our three week yet. No, we only is... we have a rare few three weeks this yeah. time. So yeah. I think- Which is good. Like... I think- uh, give it up again to the folks that uh, gave us our roadmap because I really am glad we're able to dig so deeply into d just two chapters at a time these last few weeks because there's so much to talk about and clearly we've filled the time. <laughs> so much to talk about and like talking ourselves in circles about it. I, I feel like I got to talk about our comment section being like, stop thinking so hard. Even yeah. Erickson's like, just, it's going to be a lot. Just relax <laughs> on the family lineages or whatever. Yeah. So thanks yeah. everybody for your soft, like corrections in the comments. Definitely read them. Definitely took them to heart. Yes. Thank we you. Are <laughs> always appreciative. We should, we should, you're right. We should uh, shout it out more. Uh, how, how, um, kind and attentive everybody is to our <laughs> numerous misreads and mistakes uh, and like uh, especially when we like really spiral on a subject i can yeah. imagine like it when we're just so wrong we're like what if and yeah, i just spend i just 15 know 15 minutes being wrong <laughs> all of you being like shut up no move on <laughs> But it could mean, or what maybe is, it's, it's like, no, you're Are they the same flawed. person? Does it matter right now? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and move on. Yeah. Anyway, so thank you all. We yes. appreciate your comments as always. Uh, if you have topics for uh, non-spoiler, if you if you have other sections of other books you want us to read, maybe yeah. we'll do them. Well, who knows? The whole, everything's a, 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 an option now. Um, and thanks again to, to Mr. Erickson for, for that was awesome. Just to yes. get that email and him like, hey, I think you guys will like this. Uh, it was really cool. And now I want to read all those, um, books, <laughs> uh, willful child books. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Thanks again for watching with us, folks. Uh, we appreciate you and, uh, we have to dance it out. Have a great week. When the world's too dark of a place to be and to need an escape from reality, open up those pages. But you're doing it with your friends, so join the book club. But the